This Metatainment production is brought to you today by the Samurai Aquatics and Decor MetaVenture. Scan that QR code or click that link in the description and dive yourself headfirst into the Samurai Aquatics Discord server to pleasure your peepers on our current and future range of outdoor decor. The Wine and She Show is a Metaverse and NFT discussion and interview series brought to you by Metaverse Ventures Entertainment and host Ben68 and more cheese. Warning, the information and opinions within are solely the views of the individuals involved contains content not suitable for anyone. G'day and thanks for listening to or watching the Wine and Cheese in the Metaverse show. I'm Ben68 here with my co-host More Cheese for episode 71, recording on Friday the 10th of February for Cheese, which is Saturday the 11th for me. <laughs> Today we talked Upland-ish, Ready Player Me. SEC cracking down on Kraken, Microsoft, you fired. <laughs> That's great. Love hate relationship with the metaverse. Nokia boozing it up with Air uh, AirTex, Hermes knockoffs, NFTs, and Sandbox. Pump up your bags before it dumps. Oh, it already did. Oh, yeah, it was a rough start on this one, but we did okay in the end. So after you get yourself over to 30 Aqua Vista Way in the Genesis Node Midtown Terrace and pick yourself up a big bag of gnomes, you can sit yourself down and digest another shitty vibes episode of... <laughs> the worst show ever. Wine and cheese. Time for wine and cheese. Wine and cheese. Time for wine and cheese. One is a wanker, one's like it's dumps, one's from Australia, one's from the Bronx. Talking about the metaverse and NFTs, interviewing all the real crypto geeks. Hello and welcome to Wine and Cheese in the Metaverses show. This is Mort Cheese here with my co-host Ben, 68, and this is episode 71. Thumb up your bum. Thumb up Sideways. Bum. Sideways. I got my sandwich. I got my coffee. I'm ready to roll. Let's do it. What you got, Ben? What you got? I got lots of wine. Uh-oh. As usual. I never get to wine. But that's all right. We'll listen to you wine. You'll have a chance right now. No, I Although can't. Wi- I be... can't, my wines don't belong here. Mine are personal meta meat wines. Okay. Um, mine's just related to the carnival sale. I, th- I think it sucks that the supply was limited so much. Um, I was lucky that I got three, I believe, although they apparently there's some drama with them being delivered. Um, I was, well... It showed that I was able to buy one of DTEC's micro houses. I got one of Joe's and then I got some other, one of the other ones. I don't know which one it was. How'd you go? I have, I got three. Um, I got the beach fun. I believe I got, I got the one with the colors, the green and the orange thing. And I got another one, but I don't remember. Yes. Um, I don't know. I still think there's it's very greasy to limit the UGC supply, and then I'm expecting to see the official supply come out in the thousands. So we'll have to wait yeah. and see. If not, I will humbly eat my words and retract all said minds and shenanigans. But yes, are we Should able we to use these there? whenever we want? No, no. This is only for the limited time only for the as far as the carnival things. All right as far as I'm aware. So a lot of people have been asking in general, like when are we ever going to have a structure ornament sale that we can keep up permanently? So I don't know. I, I think that's all coming like in future meta ventures. Once, once we get the process down with um, outdoor decor, once that'll get streamlined, I'm sure they'll open that up to well, other types of meta ventures. Those skulls, those skulls uh, ornaments, can we keep those on? No, that's only for Halloween, I believe. No, not that one. No. Oh, all right. The fancy ones for Halloween. The all right. The jacket side, yeah. And something's happening with those. I'm I've, I've getting some guys pestering me in DMs trying to get me to sell my jacket side legits 
my flax and metascal or something like it's not for sale mate and then he'll come up with some other offer for me i'm like it's not for sale mate you could take it off for offers yeah no, i think it is it's just this is in the new chat feature in game so it's just as people predicted it's probably a blessing <laughs> and a curse yeah yes we need a block option yeah. yes other than that not much happening in the old upland, I don't think, is there? Oh, we got the avatars. Oh, yes, we are going to get to that. Absolutely. How, how could I forget that part? All right, before we dive into that, I'm just going to check in briefly on the Bitcoin price. Yeah, last week we were up here in the kind of choppy, and there's some red ones kicking in. So we it's dropped Friday. down below the 22,000. That's the handle. Everyone sells sells for the weekend. That's the handle. This is the cup here, the bowl. Mm-hmm. And the then that's the handle. And then it's going to go, woo! Moonshot. Not financial <laughs> advice, doing your own research. Can we see Shiba in there? Um, at the risk of me blowing up, killing my computer, we can try. It should be in my search history. Shiba. No, it's not. Shiba. Shisha. I can't see because of sheep. What are you looking up sheep for? Is that a I thought that was a New Zealand thing, not an Australian thing. Oh, it depends. If you're um if you're in New Zealand, do you say it's an Australian thing? How do you spell Shiba? Isn't it? Is it two S H I B. Oh I should know that. I'm so frazzled after trying to get my computer to work. Shiba Inu. Now I saw they've got um they're doing massive burns at the moment. Mm-hmm. They have like, been. They're going it for a while. They're going out of control with the burns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Loading, loading, loading. All right. While we're waiting for that to load, we'll have a look at this one. So, did you see this? The SEC has cracked down on the Kraken Exchange with the um with the kind of uh, what do you call it staking rates that they put out. Really. Yes, massive pushback. So wow, so yeah, I just got into here, Kraken. Oh no! <laughs> so, <laughs> the hours that followed the bomb bombshell decision by the US or the USC or the SEC, sorry, to charge the Kraken cryptocurrency exchange with the unregistered offer and sale of securities for its staking as a service product saw a wave of pushback. Wow. And while resistance from crypto firms was predictable, there was also unexpected dissent from within the ranks of the regulator itself. Woohoo. Not surprisingly, Coinbase was among the first to respond to the announcement as the US exchange was also targeted. That's interesting. And investigated by the SEC for its staking offerings. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, the rates they were offering was ridiculous. So, I don't know. I always get a bit um, eye twitchy when I see that sort of stuff, but well, SEC is poking around. I got in there so I could purchase one particular stock, which was Mana, the Central Land. Yep. Because um, I couldn't find it anywhere else, and I looked into everything, and this was the easiest and um, cheese friendly. And it was; it was yep. very easy. My gosh. I, I mean, the process is long. Of course, it has to be for security uh, reasons, but. Yeah. yeah, it's it's one of those things where you got to get in, get what you need and get it, get out. Yeah, I'm not staking anything, but I was interested in looking into it. This fucking piece of hair. This fucking piece of hair. Just put it right back um, there. For some right. reason, Shiba Inu is not bringing up the. Yeah. The proper chart, but we've we've got this one price, so it's followed pretty much the same trend. We we're up, we were choppy. This is uh one month, so yeah, and we're down seven days. Let's look at that. That's more a reflection of what we're looking at for the Bitcoin price. Yeah, pretty similar. Same kind of deal. I got in at um four zeros and a ten. Uh, now we're at four zeros and a one two, a little bit of a boost there. So, but mm-hmm. we have been up as high as one five. So yeah, have to wait and see. All right, three D. We're in three D cheese. 
3D has come to Upland via Ready Player Me, which kind of all ties into the spatial. It seems to be a big um, circular thing happening where all of these sorts of things are kind of converging into one. Just there, as spatial is kicking off. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of people excited about it. There's some people who actually mentioned something that got me thinking um these avatars are they gonna now take away from block explorers um well i i think it's going to be layer two versus layer one i think in layer one within the app itself that you're always going to be interacting with a the block blocks. explorer yeah i would assume so and layer um, two is going to be your avatar yeah i would ex expect so but it's interesting that um ready play me has been kicking around for ages like what did you see? You you when City Runner got that block explorer ages ago. I'm not I'm gonna say block explorer now, that 3D avatar, you went and got yours. Like we just went through this big kerfuffle before we tried to get started here or finding what was where and there's stuff from ages. Yeah, like I when I did the um Upland Cafe New Year's NFT for Uplando. I remember asking, I had to get everybody's permission to put their picture in it. And City Runner wanted to use his Ready Player One. And this was years ago, a year and yeah. a half, maybe. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. And like, he he knew about it from the way beginning. So like, big ups to him. Absolutely. Should we take a look? How we look in the metaverse? Sure. Now that we're in 3D. So I'll pull up mine. So I posted this on Twitter and everyone's like, oh my God, I can't believe it's so close to you. I'm like, yeah, it kind of is, but it kind of isn't. It is. It is. There's not enough gray in the beard and need a gray streaks option. No. <laughs> yes. But it's pretty cool. If you um, press capture, there's all different options there to be able to do funny poses and backgrounds and whatnot. So that's me. Let's check you out. How'd you get it so nice and clear like that? Let's see. Oh, what do you mean? I have I have the one that I just imported to um you're gonna yell at me. Hold on. Why? Because I'm Why in yelling? Elijah's place. I'm in Elijah's place, but I was able to bring in my ready player one here. It won't let me get in close. I could put the freckles on it, which is cool. Yeah, yours yeah, that's cool. So you're way more than you than mine does me. Well, that's cool. Well, you're in um, you're in Elijah's. I was in there, but it just booted me out for some reason. Maybe I was inactive. Can you um, run right. over and check out check out the new Samurai Quest? Oh, you're right there. Look at that. Of course, I am. So, yeah, if um, if you go over to the real node LA, pretty much as soon as you land, you can see the um, theater. I believe if you back up a bit, the theater's on the your right, maybe as you back up. Oh, the theater is yeah, right so, here. So you yeah, when so you start, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, so DTEC um, worked with Elijah to deck all this out. Oh, well, there's someone in there. Yeah, you sitting down chilling. It. <laughs> we'll we'll go bother that person in a bit, but like yeah, as soon as you go down the stairs, before you travel to the real node neighborhood, if you go to the left here, it's right there, and then it'll bring you to our store. Yep, and we're working on potentially. Well, we we're working on DTEC's working on building our own space within there, so there'll be different options. And before we kicked off, Cheese and Cheese and I talked about um. Setting up an MBE thing. Look at that. Look at all that beautiful inventory for sale, cheese. I know. I got to go over there and get some. You fucking look those, gnomes. Look at all those gnomes. <laughs> Under mint gnomes, cheese. Can you believe it? Under mint. My God. Yes. So, no. They need some scuba gear. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, that's, that's all pretty cool, that whole spatial thing. So, go and check it out. So let me go see what the hell this guy's doing. See what that guy's doing? Just it looked like he was sitting backwards. I can't believe how fast your computer loads compared to my laptop. That's incredible. I'm a gamer. This is my therapy. Oh, well, he's he psyched not there. 
Ah, you, you got some. Yeah. Loot. Jeez. I'll stay in there. Let people come come visit me. Yes. <laughs> so now it's kind of interesting how all of those worlds are starting to connect, you know, spatial, ready player me, upland. And there's 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 a whole bunch of different places that use the ready player me kind of service. So 2023 is setting up to be very interesting, I think. Have you have you played around with the mobile app for racing yet? Or did you just stick to <clears throat> desktop upland racing? I just stick to desktop. Have you? Yeah, I have. I mean, it's it works. That I'll give it that thing. It definitely does what it's supposed to do. You can. Um, I did a couple of races. Won the first one, and then got my ass handed to me in the second one. So, um, mm, and the I the next I, four. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, and um, yesterday I spectated on Impasta was doing a race. I was spectating on that, so it definitely works. It's just very. It's very um, minimalist, shall we say, as far as the app feature goes. It, I mean, I mean, I've I done, would, I'd assume it has to be though. Well, I've done game jam games that have more razzle dazzle to them in twenty four hours of developing. So I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that's just the bare minimum vile product or whatever they call it. So it works. It works. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and I did pick up. I picked myself up another Series 1E, a nice black one. Nice. And I've, I have put my feelers out there to try and round off and get a yellow one. So Can I you think imagine that... if you would have just listened to me and, like, woke up for the car, you would have got one at mint price instead of me giving it to a Blando? The red one. Yes. Was it? That was an E, too, was it? An E, a 1E, yeah. Yep. Yes, would have saved me a few Apex. Yes, I would like to get an R, but I think they're way out of my price range. They're going for crazy money. And mostly the for pretty much all USD sales, unless you're talking three million upex or something. That's kind of a bit crazy. I guess if I have any regrets or whatever you call it, regrets. Regrets. It would, regrets, that's it. If I have any regrets, it'd be um back when the first first sale came through for cars. And I put a bid in for 2 million Upex. I think the lowest, I missed out by like two places. I think the, however many there was available that I missed out by like 200,000 Upex or something. It was oh, 2.2 wow. 2 million was the bottom. But at the time I didn't really have enough to cover it. So I was playing within my means, but for an extra 300 K, I could have got one of the fancy wrangle dangle ones, but it is what it is. You got to play within your means. Well, shall we dive in? What else have we got? Not that one. Let me get out of there. And oh yes, this. And it's gonna reload on me. So this is pretty greasy. Microsoft has pulled the pin cheese. <clears throat> yeah, like it's pretty um amazing what they were trying to do. And I wonder why they had to just completely scrap it. Yeah. industrial metaverse project so like what the hell does that even pertain to let's see the 100 members of the team have been laid off according to a person with direct knowledge of this matter so yeah microsoft disbands industrial metaverse project report um, microsoft has ended a project that aimed to encourage the use of metaverse in industrial environments oh we talked about this at the time remember like yeah. talking about setting up factories and all this, that, and the other thing. Huh. Just four months after it was formed, the 100 members of the team have been laid off, according to a report. Oh, look at that. My computer's going to crash. Wait. <laughs> um, the company wants to prioritize short-term projects over those needing... What the fuck is going on with my computer? <laughs> The we had to get started on this. I'm enjoying this way too much. 
What is going on here? <laughs> Go and buy some undermint gnomes, people. There's about, I think there might be 40 of them in the Summer Aquatics and Decor MetaVenture so that I can buy a new laptop. That's what all, all of those all of those gnomes are to be flipped towards my laptop fund. Oh, my God. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. One of these days we'll get organised. <laughs> Why? Why would we want to? That was hilarious. All right. <laughs> Start talking again so we can pop off. <laughs> oh, the, com- the company wants to prioritize shorter term projects over those needing longer to generate meaningful revenue. Oh, maybe they've they've looked at what um old mate Mark Zuckerberg sounded thought, yeah, we're not gonna go down that path. Uh... Spending big money for the long term play. Oh, look at this. Holy crap. The cuts form part of Microsoft's broader plan to lay off 10,000 oh. employees, about 4.5% of its workforce. Ouch. My hair is flat. <laughs> All right. So, serves you right for cackling at me. Microsoft <laughs> formed the Industrial Metaverse core team in October to work with clients in healthcare, retail, finance, services, and energy, among other industries, in building software interfaces that could be used to drive metaverse-related projects. Ouch. Yeah, that's... Microsoft remains committed to the Industrial Metaverse. We are applying our focus to the areas of the Industrial Metaverse that matter most to our customers, and they will see no change in how they are supported. We look forward to sharing additional information in the future. So hmm. it turns out the metaverse ain't that easy, eh? No. <laughs> so maybe it was um maybe it was they started working with those potential customers and got feedback from them. Who knows? Yeah. Ouch though. <clears throat> they didn't want to a... be in it for too long. The ten thousand, that's sad. That is sad, yes, absolutely. And especially for those 100, four months after you just, you know, for some of those people, it would have been their dream job working for Microsoft in the metaverse. Yeah. You're fired. <laughs> You're basic. Oh, well, actually, Ouch. Microsoft is basic because they couldn't hang in there. Ouchie mama. All right. Yeah, we might be a super short show here today before my laptop melts down. Let's see what else we got here. Um <laughs> And you found this one as well. Positive metaverse interest is highly concentrated in these countries. Well, yes. straight off the top, it's got to be, what do you think? It's got to be Asian countries, got to be oh, yeah. South Korea. Thailand, Vietnam. Yeah, it's got to be the US. Places um, that can make really good money without as much effort. Like this, this metaverse thing is really good for people in that situation. And we see a lot, a good amount of it in Upland. It's like, as long as you kind of follow the rules, which, you know, some don't, some do, then you can make this an ongoing thing. Yes. And uh, I, yeah. I wonder if it's, before we go and take a sneaky peek, I wonder if it's tied to the countries that have been doing the most investment, like you think of, you know, Saudi Arabia and some of the other ones that we've covered, China. When we're talking, I think it's you know, more of the of billions. like the countries where like the dollar is hot is pretty high, in my yeah. opinion. Well, we we will see. So it might be uh, people on the street vibe. Let's see what we got here: uh, cryptocurrency and Web three. Recently examined. I'll look at you straight away. So they recently examined around 1.6 million tweets from various geographic locations and came up with a list of countries on both sides of the metaverse spectrum with 56.8% positive metaverse tweets. Vietnam, there you go, Chase, you nailed it, ranked first on the love list. Likewise, Ireland topped the hate list (sighs) with 14.4% of negative tweets related to the metaverse. I think- How does that make sense? Because there's more of a need in Vietnam for a project like the metaverse than there would be in Ireland. The same as the US, like there's- if there was a need for it, if we were in a recession or, or a bad economy type thing, um, it would be more popular because it's a way to make money. It's 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 one of those out of the box thinking ways to make money that can help people in countries that aren't as rich as the U.S. or Ireland or England or France, etc. Yeah, side hustles. 
Yep. Yes. Absolutely. Like we saw, um, who was that that we spoke to? Uh, the Chiba, Chibi, the Chibi NFT project. We spoke to that guy from Chibi and he was, all of his artists were in the Philippines and working with him and making really good money. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's a great opportunity. Absolutely. So yeah, it says here, Philippines, <clears throat> Ukraine, Nigeria, Indonesia, and Taiwan followed Vietnam suit as shown below. The share of positive tweets oscillated in the 47.3 to 56.2% range. So that's that's also a lot of negative. Um, where's this graphy here? Hate the most. Ireland, Denmark, New Zealand, United States, Canada, and Norway. Because wow. they don't need it as much as like like you and I were out of the box thinkers and we, we've already made money off of this. Like if we can make money off of this off of this, imagine people who like can't make that much money imagine them coming to upland minting something for a thousand upics and then selling it for like five dollars yeah well even if you look at um the lowest possible price you can sell for is three us dollars uh like you know if 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 you were buying the floor in or minting the floor in brazil or buenos aires or somewhere like that and then you're just selling at three dollars um yeah, you're definitely right. As a side hustle, hustle that can definitely add up. Yeah, and Absolutely. these people are smart. Like they see they they see an opportunity, and they're getting on it. You know, as long as as you're doing it the right way, you could make it a long term thing. And what I mean is, like, if you try to game the system, of course you're going to get put in jail, uh, metaverse jail, and you won't be able to do it going forward in the future. But um, yeah. I mean, it's awesome. It's awesome that the metaverse can give opportunities like this. Absolutely. So we've got a heading here. Does the US really hate the metaverse? I don't think so. But... I think they just don't need it. They don't need, they don't see a need for it right now. I guess it, it depends who they're kind of surveying or looking into because the US has a massive gamer community yeah or economy and as we know the vast majority of the current gamers hate nfts for their own reasons because they're lazy because all right so i'm a gamer so i could get into that lazy part of my state of mind if you could just play a video game and not worry about having to make money and you're just playing the video game to kind of either achieve beating it for your own well thinking competing against somebody else you're not thinking about anything else like let's say you're well off or above now if you're a poor gamer or you've grown up poor or you're uh an entrepreneur then you're going to kind of see the need for the metaverse and nfts but if you're not and you're just the everyday kid joe schmo or jane schmo you're going to be okay. like eh yep i think you're right so it says here, as global interest in the metaverse is still bubbling, Americans are still unsure about whether it will benefit them. Benefit um, them. Yeah, there you go. You're right. Despite this, there's a tinge of hope. Coin Kickoff's research found the positive sentiment in Twitter posts about the metaverse in all 50 states. Yeah, so there is. Wyoming is reportedly the most excited. <laughs> with... <laughs> Positive Wyoming. sentiment in forty point seven percent of its tweets. Well, maybe wow. there's something in there. It's, it's Wyoming. Like, I'm a knucklehead Australian. I know very, I know very I have, little about America. Is Wyoming? I have no, Wyoming, idea. I have no that idea. That seems what very Wyoming even is. <laughs> can you live there? It, I think that's very rural, isn't it? Me. Off the top of my head, that's very I mean, rural. I see Florida there, Upland. What the hell's wrong with you? Bring Florida into Upland. They yes. love they love the metaverse. <laughs> if you can't you know? drink it or snort it, maybe they're not interested. Oh shh, Nikes. Yes. California, I, look at that. I love it. Love the most. California. Hate the most. North Dakota, Iowa, Alaska, Rhode Island, New Hampshire. Yeah, they say Iowa. Like... I don't even I... know her. Stop. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's you forgot to do a shitty joke at the start. Of the I show. know, I know. You're so frazzled getting started. There we go. <laughs> yes, Hawaii, love it. Utah, Florida, California. <laughs> Interesting. 
Right. I'm surprised New York is not in there for the love. Love. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of New York. You must. You might think is like a very rich place, but it's it's actually a lot of poor people from outside of the rich place coming into New York to work. So, I don't know. And it's kind of these figures are a bit janky. Like it says, forty point seven percent love it the most, but doesn't that then mean that there's like fifty nine point three percent don't like it? Or are indifferent, maybe. Indifferent, maybe, yeah, or no comment or something. Yeah. Yes, interesting. But yeah, I still the 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 people that I see on the street meet on the street or whatever that did you ever watch that um show Wonder Shows and People on the Street? People, oh, that's so funny. I'll have to send it your link. It's like an adult's version of Sesame Street. It's just wildly inappropriate. <laughs> All right, but, yeah, I'll enjoy that. Like the, there was talk about um, Sao Paulo coming soon to Upland. Like there was a few different things that got leaked and they've kind of had to spill the beans almost. Um, uh, several of the people I work with are from Sao Paulo and they are still got zero interest in anything to do with, you know, virtual real estate. What the hell are you talking about? You know, well, so. I, I have a guilty pleasure called 90 Day Fiance and there's a lady called Paola that was one of my favorites because she's just so loud and and <clears throat> she's so energetic and and um open and she was from she was from that area and like uh I got you got to see a lot of areas of interest there like when she went there with the fiance took him around yada yada and I'm excited for it I love Absolutely. I love that we have Brazil like I, I um like I said before, I skipped going over to uh Spain to not Spain, Portugal. Portugal. Yeah. <laughs> to concentrate in Brazil. Yes. Yeah, I first got interested in Brazil and um Sao Paulo and that back in the Sepultura, early Sepultura days. That's still one <laughs> of my go to albums, Sepultura Arise. That's one of my favorite albums. So. Wow, I haven't heard that name in so long. Probably Ooh. since the '90s, Sepatora. How do you say it? Sepatora. <laughs> I'm from yeah, the some, Bronx. You can't. Some really... people say Sepultura. Sep <laughs> I say Sepatora. Yeah, there's always I say this Sepatura big too. Yeah. Raging debate back in the day. <laughs> yes. yeah. Oh, you know what? I would love to see. I would love to see Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Mm. Because, especially with the Dominican Republic, they are hustlers. Like a lot of my friends in college and um, just hanging out with business ideas were from the Dominican Republic. And when they saw an opportunity, they they attacked it. They're like very, very hard workers. I used to go there on vacations in my uh, earlier twenties, mid twenties. And I used to go with all my friends. I just, you could probably see pictures on my Facebook. It was like 20 plus friends and it was, uh, I feel like that would be a very positive addition. Yes, I think so too. And another one, um, I, I don't know if you follow this guy, um, the Metaverse of Street Journal on YouTube. Um, Ooh. He's put up a, he does some good shorts and some videos. Um, he's got here, Asia and Africa will define Upland Metaverse in the future. So yeah, I, I'd love to see some African countries come in as well. Yeah. Or, you know, some cities within Africa. I think that would be really cool. Well, they, they had Nigeria as one of the people that loved. Yep. Absolutely. And if you want to talk about um, people that can side hustle and make some extra income, you know, Nigeria is world famous for that as are many of the Af African countries nowadays. Lots of, lots of very incredibly smart people coming out of there. There was another 90 day fiance. <laughs> it's called Soldier Boy. It's a different Soldier Boy, not the Soldier Boy we know. But oh my God, ba baby girl Lisa. <laughs> I just think of Metallica when you say that. Soldier Boy made of clay, now an empty shell. 21, only son. I remember that oh. song. No, I remember it. If you keep Lisa going. Soldier as well. Bread to kill, not to care. Do just as we say. 
nothing. I'll have to follow that up on the back end. That's where you get. Yeah. I'll leave the singing to you. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, if, if you didn't check that out, yeah, go and give uh, the Meta Street Journal a follow on YouTube as well. He puts some cool content out and does interviews and whatnot. Only a few more to touch on today, unless there's anything particular you want to um, squirrel on, but you found this one as well. Now, this one is, I don't even know what this is, Cheese. You found this. What the hell is this? Nokia. And, so, all right, Nokia is a, a family name, uses the metaverse to connect remote, br remote breweries and train aircraft techs. Now, th this caught my eye. I, I didn't even read the article to be, I'm going to be honest with you. But we never do. And we never do. Um, this reminds me of Upland bringing cafes in. The first part, anyway. <laughs> well, why train? Yeah, yeah. The first part, train aircraft technicians. Well, I mean, How is so that tidy? I, I, I don't know if you ever played a game called uh, Flight Simulator. Ah, aren't you clever? <laughs> I try. I, I have my moments. <laughs> I didn't even think of that angle. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, and and like my, I know my my husband's little brother Alexi, he got really into the flight simulator so much so that from Finland he would fly over to Arizona. I remember you saying that, and he, he'd <laughs> say he'd call you up and say, "Hey, I'm over your house," I'm and you'd be like, "What the fuck." <laughs> Uh, waiting for a knock on the door. Yeah. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. Yes. Dorayman's <laughs> door. We need Dorayman's door. <laughs> All right. So what the hell does this mean? From beer breweries on opposite ends of the globe to aircraft technicians in isolated airports, telecoms inf infrastructure firm Nokia has been looking for ways to use the metaverse to aid workers in remote locations. Nokia, who many remember as a manufacturer of consumer mobile devices. Oh, hell yeah. That was my first mobile phone. My first two, actually. Mine too, I one, yeah. had one of the brick ones first, and you then I got one too. of the fancy little ones that you could play Snake on. <laughs> yes. Same. I still have it somewhere. Yes. Has since pivoted into developing technology and equipment that delivers the internet. Robert Joyce, a CTO of Nokia Oceania, told Cointelegraph his plans also includes delivering the metaverse. In quotes, Nokia set up two labs last year to really look at the metaverse and the technologies that underpin the metaverse. In quotes. All right. I like the way you Take say away, Nokia. Cheese. Nokia. Nokia. It's like fancy. I'm like Nokia. <laughs> I won't push ya, I'll Nokia. <laughs> Last year, Nokia began collaborating with an Australian university. There you go, Ben, to deliver a 5G connected microbrewery using metaverse technology, noted Joyce. Wow, using augmented reality AR, researchers from a brewery tech lab at the University of Technology, Sydney, have been working alongside researchers from a twin facility at Dortmund University in Germany. Wow. Ah. Look, that's so fancy. Look at that brewery. You know, it kind of reminds me of Breaking Bad, like all the shiny metal containers they had. Oh, well, this you is think they like can make the lab. meth in there? I used to work in a lab like that, Cheese. As, as yeah. I've, I've talked about how nobody else was allowed in there. I loved it. Did Back in meth? my former life. No, I made thousands, ten thousands of liters of microalgae. Mm. Yes. Not, not meth, yes. unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> well, that's cool. So it's basically <clears throat> fancy FaceTime for breweries. Yeah, like, breweries like a teaching people. kind of hmm. thing. Yeah, there I'm we go. Look, they actually do joint experiments where they brew beer, they change the process, the temperature, the timings, the volumes, the recipes, and they feed back all of that brewing process into the digital twin. Wow. <gasps> that way they could simulate brewing oh my god so this was this was another thing that i was reading about simulation mm -hmm. a kid actually came up with it it was a science fair and they said instead of actually doing um like like a, a abrasive chemical stuff why not simulate it 
in the metaverse. Mm. For, yeah, rather than doing actual hands-on experiments, you can do a lot of trial and error. Yeah. Once, once the models are smart enough, and who knows now with with the chat GPT and all that sort of where AI is going, it's kind of mind-blowing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. Meanwhile, like in it. South Australia, Joyce said Nokia that has been using the metaverse to potentially assist Cessna aircraft connect aircraft technicians at remote aircraft airports sorry we work with a company that had a virtual cessna aircraft you've got a cessna in front of you and then you have an audio instruction in your ear to tell you change the wheel or change a part of the engine oh that's cool for like again for cool. lessons yeah especially as um you know obviously australia US in that it's massive uh widespread and some of these places are very very remote no. so much so that we have a flying doctor's service that um you know there's no there's no hospitals in airports in vast swathes of australia it's if you have an accident or something they call the flying doctors and they fly in to pick you up and bring you to the city that's crazy yeah she's a big joint and if you look at a map of australia the vast majority of it is just uninhabited or very sparsely inhabited central deserts and whatnot so yeah there's well, a reason why it's cool. There's a reason why Australia is such a big, <clears throat> you know, continent, but there's a, got such a small population. She's all desert, bro. <laughs> yeah, so that's cool. We yeah. had a 5G connected Microsoft HoloLens and we were able to instruct people on how to surf, even service a Cessna using augmented reality in this case. We talked about that. Um, wasn't that with Elijah? With the, yeah, Apple. the glasses? Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, the Apple one where you could... Um, technicians working in factories would have you know ar pop-ups and manuals and everything so, oh, yeah. <laughs> i'm loving this great. how can i be a kindergarten teacher in vr cheese that that's the dream sit back on the couch eating cheetos while i manage my <laughs> class of 22 four-year-olds living the dream yes earlier this month nokia global chief strategy and Technical office uh, old mate told the World Economic Forum that the metaverse will have the biggest immediate impact on industries rather than the consumer market. Yeah, and that's that's what we've been saying all along in the history of the show. Industry, bureaucracy, that's going to even you know the sex industry, all of that's going to lead before um before we go mainstream. Perhaps, yeah. What else have we got here? Ports have begun using digital twins to track every container on their docks, no matter how deeply they are buried in stacks. Yep, makes sense. Add, um, you know, NFT functionality to that for tracking of digital goods with real life goods in the in the real world. And yep, that's all very cool. Yeah, that's a good nice article. Find. Yeah. Thank you. Um, here we go. What's this before we wrap on? Joyce agreed with a statement. At, oh, hang on, I missed a statement here. The industrial metaverse promises to fundamentally change the way we work while striving pr productivity, boosting safety, and enabling new levels of flexibility. Uh, Joyce agreed with the statement, adding he doesn't expect a consumer metaverse to take off until 2030. Can you wait for your bags to be pumped until 2030, Chase? Seven I mean, more that's years. a great like retirement age. I feel like, yes, we could, Ben, because it's like, all right, we're not doing anything anyway. We're pretty well yeah. off. We have the time to do, like, we need that much time to get every all of our ducks in a freaking row. It's established. I don't know. How old am I? How old are you? How old am I? I'm going to be 44 this year. 2023 minus 19. I don't even know how old I am, like, legitimately. Oh, shit. I'm going to be 47 this year. Yeah, old So bastard. another seven years, I'll be, I'll be 54. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. And I'll be 52. There you go. And we'll be on, on a cruise, like getting fed grapes. Really? I, do cruises. I no. didn't like them until I did one. No, Maya doesn't do cruises either. So I don't think there's much chance of that. But we do. Verse, uh, he said by next year, there will be five times the revenue spent on the industrial metaverse compared to the consumer or enterprise metaverse. Um, and this is probably realistically like when, when we cover these articles where, you know, China's investing 30 billion in the metaverse, you know, Saudi Arabia's investing 10 billion or whatever. That's probably 
where most of that funds is going to go to is kind of industrial, you know, bureaucracy based stuff. It's not going to be cool apps and games you can play on your phone. There will be some of that that bleeds over, but it's not going to be the meat and potatoes. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it's going to be like training and there's going to be a, a big, <clears throat> a big, uh, what's the word? Man, uh, a big want for that. Ah, yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, it says here, the technology is not there yet. The technology is clunky, said Joyce, referring to current available consumer metaverse devices. It is, but it isn't. I mean, look at those. Did you end up ordering those glasses that we looked at last week with Elijah? No, only because I read some of the reviews mm -hmm. and some of the reviews were like, they're great, but I could see, I, I feel like they can do more. And then like what you said came into my head where you were like, um, if you just wait like a month or two, like the next best thing will be out. And I'm like, oh, like, do I yeah. want to do it now? Like, I don't really need them right now. Yeah. So I can kind of wait. Well, didn't that happen with you? You got um, the latest meta headsets for for Christmas and then we covered a few articles just after and they're talking about all the new features and you're yes. like, wait, is that on mine? I'm like, no, that's on ones that are coming out. So what what would be ideal is if something came out right before Vegas where I can wear the glasses and I can record. Ooh. Yeah, that'd be really cool. That would be really cool. And then I could just edit it later. Like whoever doesn't want to be like afterwards, I'm like, hey, you're in this video. This is what it looks like. Do you want to be there? If they don't want to be there, I could just kind of blur them. Yeah. And or edit it. a live stream or something. Have Hold a big sign. I'm live streaming. <laughs> Run away if you don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people well, diving streaming, out of shot. Live stream, I don't think people mind too much. I think it's um, the the where people can actually go back to and see over and over again sort yes, of thing absolutely. all right this goes on to here to say in quotes we see this three or five year lag before we actually see massive app uptake in consumer virtual re reality or augmented reality services end quote yep asked how blockchain will play a part in the future of the metaverse joyce was optimistic that the technology will be key when payments or a transfer of assets is involved clearly if you wanted in integrity integrity within the metaverse then blockchain will play a part yeah it's all interconnected absolutely oh here we go there's a quote for you chase if i was going to buy a house next to snoop dogs i want to ensure that it could be lifted and shifted and copied couldn't be. Couldn't it be. couldn't be lifted and shifted and copied that's where blockchain is quite useful in terms of maintaining uniqueness in a digital space yeah mm -hmm. and i think this is where a lot of Back in the day, a lot of um, ICO projects and that kind of went down the wrong path. It says here, uh, Joyce, however, said that he doesn't believe blockchain is a necessity in all applications. Yeah, back in the old ICA days, every man and his dog was trying to create some kind of ICO token, forcing their company to have some relevance in blockchain. But it's the cart before the horse situation. No, have to see. Yeah, no, that's a really good article. We got to just have a lot of um, people with disposable income. Yes. Oh, we talked about fucking that shit, too. Ben. Disposable oh. heroes. Is that the song? Is that been bugging That's you the, the whole time? That's the fucking song. Yeah. <laughs> disposable <laughs> heroes. Nicely done. Nicely done. But yeah, disposable income, like like Abdullah. Hi, Abdullah. Thank you. Thank you for being in Upland. We need more of those. Well, even didn't we talked about um, we talked about how well you've kind of joked on the show how you want some of that Roblox kid cash, but now as we talked about with the three D avatars, like we're in the three D space. If you go back to the start where we're looking at my three D avatar, it's got a Ready Player Me shirt. Well, I'm wearing my Upland Development United shirt. Well, I want this shirt. Like, can I do custom shirts, or am I going to have to pay somebody to buy an NFT related to that? We know that that's coming. Like. Yeah, variables. if if somebody creates a freaking meta venture where I, we could buy uh, an uh, Upland United Development United shirt or MBE, I would definitely put a custom order in for that, you know, and and yep. spend my money. We're the kids now, 
Yes. <laughs> Where are the kids <laughs> buying the useless Spooge shit? Yourself. <laughs> so we we got to get some money out of the FOMO kids so that we can FOMO into the adult stuff. Yes, yes absolutely. Yeah, but it's interesting that whole aspect. Like there already is within Ready Player Me, there is functionality there to deck out your avatar with um, different assets from OpenSea and all of that. So I'm pretty sure that's going to open or help open up the portal within Upland to you know different Ethereum, Polygon, who knows, Cardano assets. Lots to come in the future, I would imagine. All right, <clears throat> we've got two more articles and then we can get the hell out of here and get you out of here, people. If you've stuck with us for this long today, well done to you. French luxury brands Hermes wins NFT trademark infringement lawsuit. I, I think read this, this. Yes. This, this is great. Yeah, and this is the the very leading edge. And we've talked about this on last week's Wine and Cheese Show, the UDU podcast, in regards to people. We, we've said 2023 is the year of user-generated content. Um, 2024 might be the year of user-generated content, people getting their asses sued off. Yes, um, I love it. <laughs> it's tricky. It's tricky, but it's 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 not. I mean, you have to realize that if you're going to have put something out there that somebody else already did, yep. it's not yours. It's not yours. Yep. You can't. Like, no. Yeah, it's... I mean, I've been very careful. Like when I had the time when I was doing a lot of clips for the wine and cheese show, when I was clipping things up and I was, I wanted to get, um, you know, if we're talking about McDonald's or whatever the hell it was, I wanted a thumbnail that represented that. I was very careful about the images that I would select and I would always put the proper, you know, reference to that in the post because you can get away with it with that fair use. There's a, there's a fair use angle where you can get away with a lot of stuff. But if you're selling NFTs to make a profit, you ain't going to pull fair use. Yeah. That's no. not going to cut it. You're uh -uh. just going to get your ass handed to you. So what does this say here, Cheese? Take that away. <clears throat> uh, French luxury brand Herm Hermes has won a lawsuit against an artist who depicted its famous Birkin bags in a non-fungible token collection. The artist argued that NFTs should be covered under the U.S. Constitution's First Amendment. Not if you're selling them, you idiot. But the yeah. jury disagreed. Come on. And look, he, he didn't even try to disguise it. Um, this guy, Mason Rothschild, the artist behind the Meta Birkins. So he's just basically even used the name in it. Like, yeah. holy moly. Um. Yeah, which features digital depictions of Hermes' popular Birkin bags. Now Rothschild look at this. Created... <laughs> the collection has fetched more than 200 ETH in sales, equivalent to $331,684. How is that free speech? That's not free. That's quite expensive speech, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, and there is so many people going to get wrecked along the similar lines. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I mean, we try to cover our butts as much as possible. Like when we use fonts in our NFTs, we make sure we've paid for the license. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. And if even when you pay for stuff, you have to make sure you're able to use it. In 3D and whatnot. In 3D yeah, really... and NFTs. Like they, there's some places that actually say after you yep. purchase it, cannot be used in an NFT. Yes. Um <sighs> A lot of the times, and now it's a bit different now. When I do thumbnails, I use the Mid Journey, the AI art bot, which is my background now. That's from Mid Journey. So, um, and even the gnomes sale clip that I posted out. Um, yeah, if you weren't aware, there's um, under Mint gnomes available at 30 Acre Vista Way, Mid Town Terrace, twenty dollars each. Get them now. <laughs> um, but when I wanted to get a, a picture of a gnome for the clip I put out yesterday, I did a a Google image search and looked at um, you know not restricted by license, but there wasn't anything I wanted. I, two seconds in mid journey and I had a brilliant image for that. So, but then there's also the angle where mid journey is, or those AI art bots are pulling from copyrighted materials too. So it's still a very tricky area. It's really, it's, yeah, tricky. you have to change it up. Everything you, you get, you have to always put your own kind of spin on it or else yep. you're copy pasting. 
maybe we can touch on briefly the new set that we're working with with Samurai Aquatics. Like um, D Tech did a couple of, he was using Mid Journey as well to get some inspiration. And from that, we got the general vibe of what we wanted to go for, the general color palette and that. And that. But you're going to do all of the art. The, the actual art that we use is going to be, you've created it. it and it's not even, it's literally pixel by pixel. Every yeah. single bit's custom made. So, yeah. Yeah, especially these people that are getting involved in like structure ornament sales or whatnot, where they're hiring third parties to create the stuff for them to submit. That's, oh, that's tricky. It's tricky. Yes. Uh, Rothschild argued that the NFT should be covered under you. You covered that the Constitution's first amendment. The artist defense team compared his work to that of Andy Warhol, who depicted Campbell's soup cans and Coca Cola bottles in his art artwork. Well, does he have a point? No, because I'm sure that did, did Andy Warhol get permission? I don't know. You would you would like to assume so. Um, you would like to assume so. He said these images and the NFTs that authenticate them are not handbags. They carry nothing but meaning. <laughs> Hermes lawyers have accused Rothschild of stealing the goodwill in Hermes' famous intellectual property, create and sell his own line of products. I mean, it's hard to argue against that. They argued that customers are likely to confuse Meta Birkin's NFTs with genuine Hermes products. Yeah, of course, if the name, if even the name is that, like, who knows? This this company was probably looking to do something official themselves. So, yeah. all right. So I looked it up. <clears throat> yep. Warhol used the Campbell Soup logo without permission from the company for dozens of silk screen prints. Eventually, Campbell Soup tactically approved his use. They didn't in the beginning because of mm. the free marketing they were receiving. Mm. So who knows? Maybe um, maybe Hermes will cut, turn the page and get on board with this Rothschild. Like, who knows? Well, this guy should have reached out. First, yeah. Yeah. It says here, after deliberating for two days, a New York jury delivered a verdict on Wednesday. Two days is they're obviously debating it, stating that they found the defendant liable for trademark infringement, trademark dilution. In addition, they found that the First Amendment prote protection does not bar liability. The jury then awarded Hermes $133,000 in damages, $110,000 for trademark infringement. Well, that's all right. This guy has ripped off the brand. He's been sued and he still walks away with over 200K cheese. That yeah. sounds like a good deal to me. Yeah. And that was that Ethereum at these prices. That's, I don't know. That's says... If he would have just reached out to them and gave them a third of the profits, he would have saved the money in court fees. <clears throat> well, that's, I guess that's a cost that's not shown there is how much his court fees are. But even if the court fees are 100K, he, he might have still walked away with, you know, a year's salary in his pocket for a bit of clickety clacking. Cyber squatting, I love that word. Cyber squatting. There's plenty of people doing that. That is the best word ever. Or well, remember when um what was the everyone went crazy about the new form of uh website addresses that you can get for like dot eth or whatever. Do you remember what that was? Oh, like two, yeah. three months ago. Like the and blockchain all... domains or something. Yes. And I had had there were several people reached out and said, Hey, guess what I've purchased? And they showed me a big list of them. You know, it was udu.eth or mve.eth. And I was like, Yeah, good on you. They're like, Well, you're going to want these in the future. I'm like, Well, I'll just buy udu, udu um, properties or something. I'll just put a dot on it or something or an extra letter. I'm not, not going to give you hundreds of dollars for something you've picked up for $13. And the only reason you've bought it is for cyber squatting and to be a prick. Yeah. Good luck to you, mate. Yeah, good luck to you. We'll just come up with a new new term. I did FOMO and get more cheese wax, though. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Well, it's my name. I have to, like, keep my... Your branding. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I got a few others, too. I got um some really nice ones for RMBE. It's in my oh, open C. So also. you did FOMO into a few. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. you were getting them from you. You you weren't purposely buying them for to oh, cyber yeah, squat no. on other people. That's 
that's about as greasy as you can get. I'm not supporting that bullshit. Actually, the only time I tried to um, get a domain, get, get a copyright for something just so everybody could use it, not only myself, like just so that nobody else can kind of buy it mm. to restrict people. All right. <clears throat> I got the metas dot blockchain, the metas dot crypto, more cheese wax dot NFT, more cheese wax dot crypto, the metaverses dot coin, more cheese dot crypto, and more cheese dot NFT. Yeah. So you're just looking after yourself. You're not trying to get like Madonna well, dot crypto meta, or something. The metaverses for me, that would be MVE. Well, that's, I believe, the wine and cheese. Twitter is at the metaverse. Yeah, that's how I got yeah. the idea for that. Yeah, yeah. So I know that was cool. But yeah, cyber squatting. Is that what it was called? Yeah, cyber squatting. That's cool. All right, one more article to touch on. And this is another one that you found. Now, you said you had to go over to Kraken to get yourself some mana. Have you also picked up some sand? No. Uh, the reason why I got mana was because uh, Apple said they were going to join in there and help them out with okay. something. So I was like, whoa. So yeah, I didn't even read this one. I just saw that it soared. Yeah. I'm I'm still waiting. If we get a pullback on the general crypto, you know, stuff, I'll I'll get a little bag of mana sandbox eight. It won't be much, it'll be like hundred bucks worth or something like that to sit on. No financial advice. Yada yada. So it says here the sandbox soars 24% leading metaverse token rally. Several metaverse related tokens are flying high on Wednesday with the sandbox of sand posting 24% gains over the day. And and usually when one of a certain a similar thing goes up, others of similar things go up as well. Like being in the stock, uh the stock market, I've learned that you know, if NVIDIA goes up, AMD is gonna go up. Yes. Like that's absolutely. a good example. Here we go. Look, um, I assume you're watching the share screen, yeah? So we're looking yes. at coin market cap, metaverse coins, um, seven day, eight coins down 13.5%, decentralized <clears throat> down 10%. Sand, I can't see that. Zoom's there. Sand has had a little drop down, down 1.8%. Theta. So it seems like whatever that, they're all following the same path, look. But then that's just reflected in the Bitcoin price as well. That's had a little I bit got, of a bump and dropping down. I got mana when it was uh fifty four cents. Oh, that's a very good pickup then. Yeah. That's as soon as I read that up. article, it was two a.m. <laughs> I I got a Kraken account and I bought in. Nice. Yeah. I and I told you the next the day. day. After you already secured your bags. Well, it was still in the 50s. Yeah. I'm not going to DM you at 2 a.m. I mean. That'd what, probably be how, good. Good yeah, my time. Yeah, that'd probably be the best. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be at work. Yes. Um. So what's this? Decentraland to USD chart. So, yeah. This is going back to January. So January, it was in the 30 cent range. Yeah. Now we're up to, well, look at that, 68 cents. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not gonna FOMO into this unless we get a pullback. I have to wait and see. If if I miss it, I miss it. That there won't be it no is. pullback, brother. We'll wait and see. All right. Says so Sand, the native token of the Metaverse gaming platform, the Sandbox is leading the crypto market after surging to a three-month high of ninety-three. It got as high as ninety-three. Cool. Uh, despite a slight drop to ninety by press time, and as we just said, it's now down to sixty-eight cents. Sand has still risen a whopping twenty-four. 25% over the last 24 right. hours. Uh, scroll out, people. Don't get too excited about 24 hours. So, yes, it was a true honor to sign our Mao partnership ceremony between the Sandbox Game and the Saudi Arabia Digital Government Authority. Wow. Ooh. There you go. Wow. That's interesting. That is interesting. Oh. Huh. Uh, sandbox have you you haven't looked into buying some land actual land there no 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 i'll just play with their stock 
I thought it was interesting. Somebody mentioned might have been in the Upland Daily channel where they're talking about how Upland considers itself a an entry level metaverse or whatever. And we've spoken about this before. How if you want to get involved in Upland, you know, it could cost you as little as three dollars. Yeah. And then they said, well, but yeah, but then if you want to build, if you want to, if you're going to buy Spark to build an apartment on there to do something with, um, that's going to cost you the same as an entry level, entry level entry level property in some of these other metaverses but then they're all decked out with um you can have furniture and whatnot so it's interesting i think um or you could wait 20 weeks and get your at least 0.01 for logging in put up a skeleton and have somebody spark on you yeah spark all over you oh, wow. <laughs> that's, that's so the, the that's the so you have the network, you have the network, you have to get involved. They have so many, um, I'm a part of something that uh, Joe Lives created where we, they choose a new player and they'll enter them into a contest. They'll make sure they're not a, a multi-account or check the blockchain. And <clears throat> if they win, you know, everybody donates 10K Upix or whatever they can and they throw it at this new player yep. and it's like the community in upland is freaking amazing like where else can you do that like you want to get into decentraland what you have to pay five thousand dollars or something yeah yeah you're right i ain't gonna do yes. that it's fucking crazy yeah i mean yeah if if you, you get out what you put in like the UDU podcast is a classic example where we give away 20 to 50,000 UPEX every single week, you know? So it's interesting. I'm just going to squirrel on a thing for a second here. Uh, X1 has dropped a post in the Upland server to say that they are in the process of fixing the ownership data on the ornaments. Some of them might appear and disappear. That's what happened to me. I did have two in there and then one went missing. Um, they are aware of the issue and they're working on fixing it. So that's good. All right, one last thing, Cheese. Did you see this through the week on Twitter? <laughs> Twitter. I did. So old mate Dirt Luth is posing, striking a pose with CZ from Binance. Nice. Could have just been a quick snappy shot. You never know. Or it could have been a short conversation. Who knows? I think it was a short conversation because they both look relaxed in this photo there's no real tension um like there's touching like i like to analyze things like that you know yes. if it was just a quick snappy snap they would have been posing like tough men next to each other this is a picture where they had conversations they were laughing at jokes and you know i don't know i see this as very positive yeah, that's good. Um, we definitely would love to see Upland secure some mainstream traction in 2023. And it doesn't get more mainstream than CZ and Binance. So have to wait and see. All right, that's all I've got today, Chase. After how that. much kerfuffle we had to get started, I think we did. I think we didn't do too bad in the end. Um, yeah, this was a yes. good one. So yes, my... I'm going to get us out of here. You ready? I'm ready. Stay fresh cheese bags. Go ahead, get your picky up. Talk about the cheese, motherfucker. Go ahead, get your picky up. Go ahead, get your picky up. Go ahead, get your picky up. Talk about the cheese, motherfucker. Go ahead, get your picky up. Go ahead, get your picky up. The Empire Samurai Riding on the dingo Riding through the sky Cheese in the house Get up to dry Put your foot in the hairbrush Shoot you with the knife The Empire Samurai Riding on the dingo Riding through the sky Put you with the knife Riding through the sky The Empire Samurai Riding on the dingo Riding through the sky Cheese in the house Get up to dry Put your foot in the hairbrush Shoot you with the knife The Empire Samurai
Are you looking for some of that quality outdoor decor? But you got no freaking idea where to go? Oh, come on over to Samurai Aquatics and Decor for all your outdoor decor needs. Got yourself an empty plot of boring virtual real estate in the metaverse, do ya? Yeah, just delete that. I'm still not ready, sorry. Got yourself an empty plot of boring virtual real estate in the metaverse, do ya? Or maybe some kind of crappy ramshackle building that, I don't know, needs a bit of extra spunk to it or something. And stop mucking about and get yourself over to Samurai Aquatics Discord to see all our available stock. We've got loads of different decor to spend your pretend money on. We've got saunas to fire you up and ice baths to chew you the fudge out. Literally stock coming out of our ears. Grills, swings, seating and more. So much more. And if we don't got it, give us a buzz and we could probably make it. Get yourself on over to Samurai Aquatics at 30 Aqua Vista Way in Midtown Terrace, San Francisco, Liggety Split, and gorge yourself on outdoor decor.